Play Ball Podcast. Me to the next thing I want to talk about. I want to get this off my chest. I think I've just about exercised my energy on it. That's what this, I realized. This podcast sort of serves as closure for a lot of things that during the week for me because it's like, man, I was really like fired up about this yesterday, but like now I'm kind of like past it. But I mean, real talk. So I got picked for jury duty. I've always heard about this my whole life and I've never had to go to a court and do jury duty and all that. And like, I finally got picked. So got to miss a whole day. So I thought of work, got to miss a whole day of work. I got to do that more often because when I'm trying to clip this thing into Instagram reels, I really fuck myself up, you know, sometimes. Um, you got to miss a whole day of work. So I thought, so I go and walk my ass up there with my little sheet of orange paper. And I hand it to the, pe- the lady. She tells me to go sit in this hot ass room. There was no AC, man. You're in this big ass room with about 100 to 150 other motherfuckers you know sitting and there's no fucking ac there is no air conditioning in the 19th judicial court building in downtown baton rouge i don't want to be one of those boomers but my, my taxes pay for this fucking room that i'm supposed to be sitting in and i'm cooking in this mug man with a bunch of other people all in there cooking you see nothing but people you know fanning with their little car they that they gave us and stuff so there's this big dude behind me, bro. And the fact that he's big is it just creates the aesthetic. It's world building. It's I have nothing against how big he is, but he's just back right behind me. And he's one of them situations where he's right behind you and you can't see him, but you can hear him for like a hour, two hours. And you don't want to look around. Anytime I do that I try to hit both ways, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, I can tell there's an attractive woman behind me or something like that. Just like that. Like as if you were cracking your back or you was, you know, the oh, uh, the, I'm looking over here. Oh, I can't see. So I, got, I can see better if I, it ain't got nothing to do with you. I'm not looking at you type thing. But, um, so this big dude, but I can't do that. He's like directly behind me. And he's talking about, man, I'd rather be playing. I'd rather be at home playing Starfield and this, blah, blah. He's like, any of y'all ever done this before? It's y'all first time type thing. He's like, you know, the judge going to come in here and going to do the comedy routine and this and that. And they're going to give you this. And he's running people down. And, sh- and, you know, I give it to him. He was 100% on the money. Dude came in, started doing the comedy routine, trying to loosen everybody up trying to like cut the tension that you're at a court and you have all these bulletproof vest dudes everywhere and you're in Louisiana, you know, you don't know what's fitting to go down and you're having to take time out of your day and this and that. And then, you know, they try to convince you that this is worth your time and you're going to end up having a good experience and enjoying it and you do it again and blah, blah, blah. So he calls some, he's like calling people up, you know, he's raising hands and doing all this kind of stuff. We're not here for all this, sir. Like, thank you. But like, can we get this show on the road? Like, can we get out of here? What's going on? We know you're going to send some of us home. So let's get to that part. So like. He calls this lady up, and he's, like, asking her first experience. She's like, oh, it was so long ago, I barely remember it, but it was fine. I mean, it was five. I had to be gone for five days away from my life. And it's like, what? That's another thing. You're sitting there, and you don't know if you're going to leave that day. You don't know You don't know if you're going to be able to go home. You don't know if you're going to get a case that's criminal or civil. You don't know if it's going to be just a case that's that day. You don't know if you're going to get some murder case where it's like you're going to be there for six weeks. I mean, it's crazy. You make $12 a day, too. It's insane. So the lady was like, yeah, but this time around, I'm a business owner. And, like, I got these permit things to, to fill out and blah, blah. And, like, we have till Monday. So I, like, really don't have time for this shit. And he's like, all right, thanks, man. I mean, you can sit down. Like they, they, they don't care. They don't care at all. So, like, they sit us in there for buku long again. This lady that's over the whole jury, uh, jury operations, whatever, her name is on the front of the paper and stuff. Like, she's in a, some sort of official legal capacity or, some, or something. And 
she gets in there she keeps referencing how hot it is and it's like man we know we're the ones who have to sit up in this hot ass room you keep going back to your office that got air conditioning in it because you've done told us that three times so she comes in there and she repeats it exactly what the man just told everybody so they're trying to be like she's trying to be like secretive and be like well okay so if you got this raise your hand uh, you got this raise your hand uh, if you're you know you have a medical issue blah blah raise your hand she's like okay these last two parts don't raise your hand just come to my office and stand in line and she's like, if you're a felon, you got mental illness, you know, you got this, that, basically all this sensitive information. She says, y'all don't raise your hand. Y'all just get up and go to my office. So all these people who are felons who, like, can't read or write, uh, who have a mental disorder, you know, all, all these sensitive topics, they all get up at the same time and walk over to the lady's office. It's like, these are the people running this. These are the type of people running this shit. And like, bruh. So, then finally, so they all have to line up in the la- at the lady's office. Single file line. That's another hour, hour and a half. That, 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 that's, a, that's another hour, hour and a half right there where she's talking to each one of these people one by one. And it's like, this is, you know, whatever. But like, the fact that we're sitting here baking in this room is crazy. Like, it's real bad. I'm sweating. Like, bad. And finally, she comes back out. She references how hot it is. Again. Y'all, it's hot. It's hot. I'm trying to get through this. We're trying to get through this quickly. And I'm going to need y'all cooperation, blah, blah. You know, just... It's a state job, man. I used to work a state job with older women like that. They, they're, they're this close to retirement, man, and they don't give a fuck. They are through, man. They this close to being retired. You can't fire state people for just any old thing. State people got to get caught with child pornography or some shit to lose their job, man. Especially whenever you that deal. I looked this lady up after this ordeal. She's 57. That means she's got three more years. And she's out of there. She also has... I'm, I'm going to talk about that after this. This is the part where everybody's got a badge number on their piece of paper. And she's going to say your badge number. And she's going to say your first name. And then tell you where you need to go. So the first group, she says, these people can go. I'm going to need to see y'all back Wednesday at 8.30. So first lady calls her name. Something's fricked up with that so that takes five minutes pisses her off second lady asian lady sitting right next to me she's obviously trying to read and 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 she's obviously trying to figure it out and the lady's like look here y'all i got uh good uh hearing i don't got good eyesight i'm gonna need y'all to say here all right so the lady gets up she goes next person needs to say here and you know god forbid of course, the next person is my number and my name. So I stood up quick. I'm getting up out there, raising my hand. I'm six foot four. I know this lady can see me. That wasn't even something I was thinking about. What I was thinking was, I need to get up and get out of here and be quick about this because the lady's trying to get it moving. I stand my big tall self up and she goes, Mr. John, you can just go and sit back on down because I told you to say here. And I'm going to need to talk to you after this. Whoa. I was like, I sat back down, but like, she did this in front of like 150 people, bro. She was like wanting to get off on somebody. She wanted to establish that unnecessary, you know, it wasn't even a situation for it, but she was pissed off. She's bitter. She's old. She's almost retired. She got a little stroke of power. She feels, I guess. And then, so she figured, and then the air condition was the last straw, man. And so she just decides she's going to try and embarrass me in front of everybody. Just for no reason. And she calls two more names, and then she goes, all right, Mr. John, you can go. Well, first of all, I didn't pay much mind to it in the moment. I was pissed off, but I walked up out of there, and I called my boss, told him I'm coming back to work. They let me go, and then told him what just happened. And it was like, 
that was absolutely ridiculous. And there's nothing I can do about it. You know what I'm saying? You just disrespect. And this, that's exactly why people don't want, like that stuff. That's why nobody wants to. You got all these people on a jury that's res possibly responsible for whether somebody goes to jail or is free. Or, you know, they, they so much relies on a jury that's been sitting there all day with no air conditioning and getting disrespected by old shrews. You know, them are the people that's responsible for people's freedom. That is terrifying, crazy, and absurd. And I wish I could say I was shot. It makes me not want to go back and participate. I got to go back tomorrow morning. I got, God knows what I'm going to get caught up in. But I, I seen her name. And I'm from here. And, you know, this part is for the people that's from here. Her last name was a name. This is going to sound probably bad, but I mean, it just is what it is. I don't want to out this lady. I don't want to say her name and I don't want to out her family. If you figure it out, you figure it out. But this is this part is relevant. Her last name. I looked at her last name before I got too pissed off. And I, I, I looked at her and I could she resembled other people with that same last name from my area that I grew up around. And if you're smart enough, you can put two and two together that she belongs to this particular family that has a lot of power. I'll put it to you that way. That's about the best. That, that's the only thing I really need to say about that. She, I don't get, need to get into too much more detail about it, but she was, I've, my boss looked her name up whenever I got back to the office and I seen that she was from my hometown. So putting all that together, she's from my hometown. She has the same last name as these powerful people and she looks like them. So, I mean, she obviously, you know, someone that had the same last name as her used to be a powerful person in law enforcement in Baton Rouge. And it's part of a very powerful family that I can't even touch. So all of that just like you ain't, you know, that's Baton Rouge, man. Don't none of us got no power around here but a couple families. You know, the law, law enforcement, you know, the jury lady. All these people can just handle you, and you can't do shit about it. There ain't a thing you can do about it. And you're just supposed to take it. Louisiana is one of the most corrupt places you can ever think about. And think about it. The person that low on that totem pole can treat people like that. Think about what the people at the top, the judges, the, you know, the people that make the laws. Think about how they, what they can do. So, I mean, it was just an eye-opening experience. And I, I hope tomorrow goes simple and well because I don't really need no more eye-opening experiences when it comes to the, the law here in Louisiana. Oh, I could keep going and stuff, but I think I'm going to just move on from that topic. So, Play Ball Podcast.